cut you to draw a graph of y equals sine of x, okay? And if that sounds impossible, it's not as impossible as it sounds. Okay. But we're going to concentrate on, you can see them over here, the graphs of sine of x, cosine of x, tangent of x. Okay, we're gonna kind of, for the, uh, the sine and the cosine, we're going to find this thing called the amplitude, and then for all of them, we're going to find this thing called the period. So, really quickly, the graph of the sine and cosine are going to look generally like a wave. Okay, it's a little bit of a helpful hint that we wanted to do this. So you can that there's, there's some symmetries to these waves, all right? If we split it down the horizontal like this, you see there's like the top and the bottom, right down the middle. This thing right here is called the amplitude. We're going to talk about the amplitude and find the amplitude and uh, calculate the amplitude, write equations of, of uh, sines and cosines that have the amplitude that we want them to have, and that kind of good stuff. And notice, let's say we start at this point. So we talked about the amplitude. We're going to talk about this thing called the period. If you go down here and then you come back up here, you can take that shape, copy it, paste it right on top of this one. Okay. This is when this happens. When we keep going back and forth and making the same shape, we call that a, a periodic function. Okay. And so the distance between any two points that are like corresponding parts of that period, whether it be this top part and this top part, or uh, this guy right here, all the way over to this guy right there. Like that horizontal distance is the same, as long as I pick two corresponding points. All right? And I could pick this bottom point, this bottom point, this one, and this one, it's all gonna be the same. And that distance, called the period. Okay, so like on the x-axis, how, how long is that period? We're going to look into that. Um, and uh, yeah, we're going to do that. And uh, Now tangent is going to look a little different. You're going to work on that a little bit yourself. It will have a period, but it won't have any amplitude. And I think that'll be clear why. Right. So that lays out the basics. Now we have to get more specific. And to get more specific, I want you to get out your unit circles. You should have a unit circle. If you don't, I have a few extras to be filled out. Uh, that's all you need. Remember that a graph, you have graph paper there, and, and I gave you specific graph paper, because look at the x-axis. What kind of values do we see on the x-axis? <sighs> Spit it out. Uh, radians. Radians, we got radians there. This, is, this could be the radians axis. <coughs> And vertically, that's going to be the y value. And for this, this function here, that's going to be the sine of whatever radians you have. So you go to this radians, what's the sine? You plot that point, there's a point. Plot enough points, you start to see this curve, this wave you take shape. Right. Think about it. Think about going around and around and around this uh, unit circle. There is this uh, back and forth, this periodic repeating pattern for the sine and the cosine. And like I said, it might be, help, might be helpful to create a table, a table like this is x, and this is y, which is, how do you find y? You take the sine of x. If you start at 0, maybe you go to something like <coughs> pi over 3, pi over 4, pi over, uh, maybe pi over 6 before pi over, <coughs> before pi over 4, pi over 3. I guess we should switch pi over 4, pi over 3. Pi over 6, pi over 3, pi over 2. And figure out what those values are, plot them on the y-axis, see if you can start to see that shape take form. All right, so I need to do that for a couple minutes. Okay, so some have made some progress, and, uh, and others are, are working hard. Uh, well, everybody's working hard, I guess. But it looks like we're at a, a good spot where people have investigated pretty, pretty far. So if we... Look at um, the graph here. Along this axis, we have an angle. We go to an angle, and then we figure out what the sine of that angle is, and that'll be our y value. Okay? So I know this is weird because the unit circle is in a circle, right? And then we graph it 
on the on the horizontal plane, the xy plane, and now this, this circular thing seems to turn into this uh, this wavy thing. Okay. So it helps to, to go into detail and investigate the whole thing. So let's let's start at zero. At zero radians, okay, that's the, the axis here, the angle theta, right? We don't call this the theta axis. At zero radians, what is the sign of zero radians? Zero. Zero. Zero radians, zero radius. Zero radians, zero radius. All right, let's go to the next one that's marked, because it's already marked, and it has to be easier than that. So we go to pi. What is the, what is the, what's the sign of pi? Zero. zero. Also zero. So it seems like it comes back to zero. Yes, that makes sense. It does do that. When I look at the unit circle and I start at zero, it's sign <coughs> zero. Come over to pi, it goes back to zero. There's this, this cyclical nature to it. How about let's go to two pi? All the way around to 2 pi, what's the sign of 2 pi? Zero. Zero. So you can see why it's wavy, why it's periodic, why it repeats itself, why there's a pattern, right? If you go to 3 pi, we'll go to 3 and then 4 pi, and then we'll look at some other values. What about 3 pi? Where is 3 pi? Um, uh, over here, yeah. So that's 2 pi and 3 pi, and the sign again, 0. And 4 pi, 0. Is there any multiple of pi? Any multiple of pi is going to be right at that horizontal here on the unit circle. And, and when it's when there's no vertical, the sign is vertical, then there is a zero sign. Okay, let's go right here. How how big is this angle right here? This is over here, pi. This is half pi. Pi divided by two. Pi over two. What's the sign of pi over two? One. Okay, so pi over two, sign of pi over two. See a tape shape here. Okay, let's go here. How big is this angle? It's three pi over two. Exactly, three pi over two. So pi over two, right? Pi over two. Then we go another pi over two. We're at pi. Go another pi over two. Another pi over two right there. We're at three pi over two. That represents this angle right here. Negative one. Negative one. Go back to zero, and we go to what is this? It's a little bit tricky. What angle is that? Pi over two, two pi over two simplifies to pi. Three pi over two, four pi over two simplifies just to two pi, which isn't written here. But simplifies pi. And so that's four pi over two, and five pi over two would be one half more than that. Okay, so you could even mark it five pi over two. Okay, so what is the sign of five pi over two? One. You think we've established a pattern? We can kind of follow this pattern? No. It goes down through here, goes to there, goes up there, it'll go up there, and it'll just go up and down and up and down and up and down. Okay. All right, before we go any farther with that, let's go in the negative direction, see what's happening over there. Okay, so these dots <coughs> are kind of, So let's go in the negative direction. Let's go to negative pi. How do we get to negative pi on the unit circle? Do bad math. Yeah. Backwards, clockwise, down from here. And then around to there, there's negative pi. What's the sign of negative pi? Zero. Zero. What's the sign of negative two pi? Zero. Zero. Uh, yeah, we already said this. Any multiple of pi, we're going to have a sign of zero. Even negative multiples of pi are going to be a, a zero sign. Okay. What angle is this? Negative two pi. Two over pi. Two over pi. Two over pi. Negative That's pi, pi over two. Pi over two. Negative pi over two. What is the sign of pi over two? 
What is the sine of negative pi over 2? 1 to 1. 1. Go. How about what's this angle? Where is that? Negative 3 pi over 2. Yeah, negative 3 pi over 2. You've got 3 halves of pi, so negative 3 pi over 2. And what's the sine of negative 3 pi over 2? 1. It's 1. Start to see that pattern, right? Then it's going to come. No. Oh, whoops. There you go. Okay. Just that good. Come down through here. <laughs> there, up there, there. Okay. We've got some points to help guide us through sketching this graph. Let's come back over here. I think I've been bested, but then I do this, and it's all fixed again. <laughs> okay, so now, now let's think about this. Um, what angle is this? Fourth of pi, pi over four. What's the sine of pi over four? Square root of two over two. Square root of two over two. How big is that? That's one. So if we want an estimate, you know, square root of two is a number. Two is a number. We can divide those numbers. Just get a you know calculator here. Calculus there. Square root of two divided by two. That's the square root of a decimal. So 0.71, okay, so not quite three quarters, but getting close. So maybe, let's see, that's divided into 10, so it's like 0 0.7. 0 0.707 is maybe right there. I should make this easy. Right there. Right? Okay. So you would actually just like estimate it on Yeah, you gotta, okay. to get an idea of where it is. Um, how, about, how about 0.5? Is there a sign of 0.5 somewhere? Is there an angle that has a sine of 0.5? Yeah. Which angle? An angle? Which one? Oh, uh, pi over six. six. Pi over six. Pi over six. Okay, so that divide this into six pieces. So this looks like about pi over six right there. It's like about a sixth of pi. And that's exactly one half. We can put it down right there. So now it's really starting to take shape. Right, we go up to uh, pi over 2. Pi over 2 has a sign of 1. If we go a little farther to, uh, let's say, 3 pi over 4, so that would be right here, 3 pi over 4, 3 fourths of the way to pi. It also has a sign of root 2 over 2, which is the you know, same vertical as pi over 4. And if we go to 5 pi over 6, it also has a sign of 1 half. 5 pi over 6 maybe is right about there. So our graph, if we, if we keep making all these points, if we keep graphing all of these points over and over and over, even for angles that aren't marked on the unit circle, for pi over 12 and pi over 24 and 3 pi over 17, all these guys, then, what's that? It will form. It will form, yes, all those dots together will form that curve. Okay. We're going to stop somewhere between uh, like maybe where we are and an infinite number of points because we don't have an infinite number of minutes. To be doing this, so it's so I'm going to guess all these points are going to be here, 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 here. Of course, all the points between here are going to look like that. All the points here, I like it needs to come up and be nice and smooth. Don't make those pointy, okay? That's just not accurate. Not too pointy. Okay. Here are all the other points coming through somewhere like this. Maybe that. This isn't so good. I don't know. <laughs> uh, maybe this is supposed to be over a little bit. Uh, I'm doing my best, right? And then we come through here, and if I were to plot all these points, I'd find all of the sine values are negative here, right? And they're coming back up, and now they're zero, and now we're back into the positive signs, and we're back down to zero, and into the negative signs, and back up to zero, and into the positive signs. And then I just connect all of those points. And when it, with this curve, this, this line that I'm drawing, uh, I'm really just kind of making my best guess at where all those lines are going to wind up. Being, right? Not just connecting the points, I'm, I'm making a guess at where all of the points will land. Okay? So I'm guessing that this point will land right there, and this one will land right there. And now I've drawn a, a reasonable graph on this side. Can we come over 
over here and following you know what we've done over here on the right side if we continue it to the left side it's going to be some kind of a curvy thing that comes down and, and bottoms out there comes through here right through there this deep end like this So we just keep going up and down and up and down and up and down. Um, so, so does this shape make you think of anything? Maybe? Sound waves. Sound, sound, yeah. Yeah. Sound, sound, waves. Waves. sound waves follow what's called a sinusoidal, sinusoidal, sine, Japanese. Sine. 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 sinusoidal uh, pattern. Okay. What exactly is it that goes through this cycle? What, what is it about a sound wave that goes up and down and up and down and up and down? It's not, the, the, the wave does not go like this, right? You know what I mean? Through yeah. the air. We draw it that way, but how does sound work? Um, Any physics students? No? I think it has like at all. And low, it does have highs and lows. High what and low what? Pitch. No. Frequencies? It does have high and low frequencies. But the high and low that we're seeing here, if this were a, a, the, like, the graph of a, a sound wave, would be, well, here's how it works. My, my vocal cords vibrate, and they, they knock together what? Create sound. Huh? And they create sound. They create sound. What does, the, my, what does the sound travel through? Is there sound in space? No. So what is it that moves the sound air. along? Air. Air. Yeah, the molecules in the air. So my vocal cords vibrate, and they vibrate the air in such a way, and then... Wait, there's no sound in space? No. No. Technology. <laughs> I did not know that. <laughs> so when you watch well, a, a, a space movie, movie, there's an explosion, and you hear boom. I'll do that. Like the movie Mock that movie. So that's that is weird. <laughs> okay, so yep. I am basically pushing air out of my out of my throat and it's pushing all these air molecules together and when you push stuff together molecules you increase the pressure and friction pressure the temperature a little bit so you increase the the uh, the pressure the air pressure at right there okay and so these molecules get pushed together it's not like I'm sending this molecule over to this it pushes like these air molecules push together and then they repel each other, and these molecules push against these molecules, and then these ones go and push against these ones. And so depending on the pitch of my voice or all those kinds of things, a different, like if you could see the air, like the air here would be at a, a high pressure, and then this would be at a low because the, there's a little bit of movement of these air molecules, and then they push against these air molecules, and there's like the slinky effect, which is that they push against each other. And there's not a lot of molecules actually transferring, like actually moving. Okay? They're pushing against each other. There's high frequency or high pressure here, low pressure where they're moving in between two positions, high pressure here, low, high, low, high. And that's what we're seeing here. High pressure, low pressure, high pressure, low pressure if we're talking about a sound wave. Okay? Are there any other things that go through patterns like that? Highs and lows, highs and lows. Seismographs, yeah, they are a compression wave just like sound is. Right? If you feel the ground rumble, it's because uh, this, the exact same thing is happening in the ground that's happening in the air when you make sounds. Yeah, pressure, like those molecules move. They don't move as much as air molecules move, but they, they vibrate against each other. But they don't actually like then live in a different place. They stay where they are, but they just kind of vibrate a little bit. That message along. High pressure, low pressure. The tides, yeah, there's... At different times of the day, the water is high, like it comes into the shore a lot, and then later it's low, depending on the, the time of year. The average time per day is high or low. Uh, how about the, you know, here more relevant to us, the, the water level of the rivers, yeah. right? What, what time of year is this? Summer. Late summer. Yeah. Late summer. Like late summer. Early morning. I think I said it's lowest in the fall. Yeah. And then this would be spring. Spring, all of the summer. snow melts is coming down the mountains, and it's Rain. raining some, and it's yeah, lots and lots of water is making it into the rivers, and it's very high. And then it happens all over again the next year. What else goes up and down <coughs> as the years go by? What if I check the weather? Uh -huh. Temperature? 
temperature goes up, and the temperature goes down, and then it goes up, and then it goes down. What time of year is this? Summer. Summertime in? Wintertime in? Spring. Spring, because it's cold and getting warmer. Oh, so the other one's so Spring, so this would be fall, getting warm and getting cooler. Yeah. Montana, you get the average, the averages come out like that. <laughs> okay, but the thing is, if we're looking at, say, uh, temperatures uh, from month to month, we're not going to say things like at pi over two months. Right? That's silly. The graph, the shape would look the same, but it, the actual values would be different. Okay? Um, and the, the highs for, say, temperatures, I'm not going to be one. Like, One degree. That's, right. that's not the high. That's right? So we're talking about period and we're talking about amplitude here. <laughs> so what's the amplitude of this wave? If you can remember back to that drawing that I One. made here. What'd you say? One. Yeah, from the middle to the top, the amplitude is one. Okay? So the amplitude of your standard sine wave is one. Now if I wanted to make this model temperature, it would need to go up at what kind of amplitude do you think it would have? Question. What kind of an amplitude, if we, if we made this model the temperature, what kind of an like, amplitude? So for the, it would be like the high for the summer or something? Because yeah, like like it'd be from zero to... Well, the, the amplitude is from the middle to the top. The middle would be 32, right? Do you think that's about the middle? What, oh, like what would so the middle, the middle be? Wouldn't be zero. It um, would be between the highest temperature and the lowest temperature, right? Like right in the middle. So what do you think the highest temperature is that we get here? 101, maybe. 101 degrees. Okay. And then uh, what's the lowest one? Like. Like one or two. No. I, you think? It, it, it was negatives this one. Yeah, it was like negative 20 something, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. I'd say oh, I was going to say negative So minus right. negative 20. Okay, like that's how much variation we're going to see. Plus 20. Okay, so plus 20. And we'll divide that by two, and that'll give us like the middle temperature, right? Yeah. Temperature right in the middle. So 121 divided by two. 60.5. 60. 60.5. <laughs> about the average. So that's the average. What's, what's the amplitude from the middle to the top? How'd you get that? I just subtracted 60.5 from 100. There you go, because there's the top. There's the middle. So the difference between the top and the middle would be 101 minus 60.5. And what's the amplitude? Four and that would be the amplitude. That would be how tall that wave is. Yeah. Very what's, good. Oh, never mind. Okay. Um, <coughs> so we'll talk more about amplitude and period. But that would require us to change the equation. Like it's, It would have to be like y equals something times the sine of 2x or 5x or, or x over pi or something like that. Of the function. So before we do that, let's just stay with the basic graph. And we'll do the cosine now. Okay, so I just need that for the sine. Let's talk about the cosine. Uh, you got you got four graphs, four graph papers. So uh, pick another one and uh, do the cosine. Y equals the cosine of x. All right. So. Uh, Got some graphs of cosine of x out there. Does it look similar? I say, does it look similar? Yeah, yes. Are you surprised? No. No, because cosine kind of does the same cycling through that the co that, that sine does. It just kind of starts somewhere else, right? It has the same values. It's one, it's pi over two, or uh, root two over two, root three over two, one half, negative one half, negative one, all the same values, just at different uh, angles. So at uh, zero radians, what is the cosine of zero radians? One. 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 So instead of starting down here, since up here, all right. How about a pi? What's the cosine of pi? Uh, negative one. Negative one. How about a two pi? One. Yeah. One. one. And three pi? Negative one. Negative one. And four pi? One, one again. Okay. How about at pi over two? Zero. Two. Zero. And at three pi over two? Zero. And five pi. How about negative pi over two? Zero. Negative pi. Negative one. And negative three pi over two. Zero. Zero. Negative three pi. One. Uh, keeps following this pattern. The co 
cosine waves looks a lot like the sine wave, but you'll notice they're not called cosinusoidal waves. They're called sinusoidal waves. Uh, well, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you're just <laughs> What is you soil? Did you uh, think this was like high school? I always imagine no. there's some kind of a suffix like soy sauce. Yeah, I mean, but. <laughs> That's what you were thinking. This just means it's like related to the sign. Uh, I don't know. I have a sub. It's a good question. I haven't really looked up. Yeah, I know your motives. What is it? Etymology? Etymology? No. Etymology. Okay. Okay. So here we go. Cosine wave is a lot like the sine wave. We could actually, I mean, we could use the sine wave to model the temperatures going up and down, or the tides going up and down, or the temperature going up and down. Or we could use a cosine wave. It's just, they're, they're a little bit different ones. Slightly shifted over to the left or to the right, depending on how you think about it. Okay. Uh, what's the amplitude of the cosine wave? Basic cosine wave has an amplitude of one. Just like your sine wave has, your basic sine wave has a amplitude of one. Okay. Um, let's talk about the period of sine. Can somebody come up? Uh, let's see what's a good color to use. Blue. 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 Yeah. And trace out one period, and you can start anywhere you want. Can you trace out one period of the sine wave? Here to there. Now, how far is that? Like, how wide is that period? How long does it take to repeat itself? Pi. One pi? One pi. Or. Is that Emily? Two pi. Two pi. Two pi. Two pi. Uh, if we started here, instead of up here, we could, we could see it real clear. Go up. Down, and once you come back up, see how it's coming up? It's coming up here. Where is that? 2 pi. Two, two pi. Or, okay, so it ends at 5 pi over 2, and, uh, and Anthony started his here at pi over 2. So we just take 5 pi over 2 minus pi over 2 and see how wide that is. 5 pi over 2 minus pi over 2, that's 4 pi over 2. 2 pi. The period is 2 pi. Okay. So today, what we're going to do, we're going to mess around with the amplitude and the period. Okay, there are also ways to shift it up and down and left and right, we won't worry about that. We're just gonna change the period and we're gonna change the amplitude, okay? <coughs> um, let's go over here. What's the period of the cosine wave? Also two pi. I have to think about it. It takes a full rotation all the way around the unit circle to start the pattern over again for sine and for cosine. Okay, let's change the amplitude of the sine wave. Let's change how tall it is. So think about what that means. We want the y values, like a, instead of getting a 1, when, it, when we get a sine of 1, we don't want 1, we want to get 2 the amplitude to be 2. Instead of getting negative 1, we're going to get negative 2. Instead of getting uh, 1 half, we want to get 1. Times two, times the sine. 2 times the sine. Not sine of 2 times x? Yeah. No. no. 2 times the sine of x. We want to take the sine and just multiply it by 2. Yeah? Yeah. Take the sine and multiply it by 2. That's right. It's going to change it, change the amplitude to 2. Okay. So, uh, what do you think the amplitude of this would be? Would the amplitude of that would be 5, simple, basic. y equals, let's try this, negative 3 times the sine of x. 
What do you think the amplitude of that one would be? It would still be three. Mm -hmm. It would still be three. You would think maybe it would be negative three, but it's all we want is from the middle two. to the top. Well, that height is still the same. Let's, let's graph this guy so that we can see a tape shape. Right. Start at zero. You don't have three. <laughs> huh? You don't have three. Oh, two. that is too sad. So I'm going to take mine. Shrink it down. So we can at least fake it. OK. All right, let's go to zero radians. Zero radians. What is the sign of zero radians? Zero. What's negative three times zero? Zero. So that's still zero. How about a pi? What, what's the sign of pi? Zero. Negative three times zero? Yeah, zero. So all these don't change. You multiply zero by a number, it doesn't change anything. Negative pi, negative two pi, negative three pi, negative four pi. Okay, let's go to what? Pi over two. What is the sign of pi over two? One. One. So this, this is where the normal sign would have its y value. But what is negative 3 times that? Negative 3. Negative 3. So negative 3 is going to be, there's 1. So that's negative 3. So instead of being at 1, you multiply 1 by negative 3, and you get to this guy down here. You have a 3, up, three pi over 2. What is the sign of 3 pi over 2? Negative 1. Negative 1. So this is where the but then we take that and multiply it by negative 3, so three. positive 3. So there, there's 3, uh, 3 pi over 2, goes up to 3, there we go. And what do you think? This will be 1, multiply by negative 3, down here to negative 3. Okay. We come to, uh, <laughs> let's see, six, 7 pi over 2. The sine of 7 pi over 2 is negative 1. Multiply by negative 3, you get a positive 3. That's what this looks like. The sine wave, except for it is, uh, I would say there's two things different about it. What two things are different about this when you compare it to sine of x? Bigger. Longer and thinner. It's taller, which causes it to look thinner. And inverted. And it's flipped over. It's inverted over the x-axis. And then we could uh, continue to make educated guesses about where these points are going to be. I'll just stop it right there because that's in the way. Let me see it. So what has changed? It's, it's three times as big and three times as tall. And, and it's flipped over. Okay. And uh, what's the amplitude? So if we're looking at an equation of, uh, of a sine wave, that guy right there, whatever that is, whatever the positive version of that is, the absolute value of that number, what is that? The, or the, the amplitude. So for, in general, if you're looking at something that says y equals the sine, the, uh, it's the sine, but a times the sine of x, then you Amplitude is absolute value. The amplitude is always a positive number, from the middle to the top. <coughs> All right. Let's do um, another one. I'll leave it to you. And it's going to be y equals negative 2 cosine of x. And uh, by the way, what is the period of this of this negative 3 times the sine of x? Still 2 pi. That didn't change. It still goes through a full cycle, though it is like a lot bigger. It still takes a full 2 pi to go through a cycle. So like before with the, the negative 3 sine of x, uh, where it crosses the x-axis or the, the 
we'll call it x, we'll use an x right there. So the, where it crosses the x-axis doesn't change because when it crosses the x-axis, the y value is zero. And when we multiply that by negative two, it's still zero. So the cosine of, what, where is, the, where is that gonna be zero? Cosine of what? Cosine of oh, well, 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 pi, pi, pi over two, two. That's, a, that's one. Where's the, where's the next one? Every multiple of pi over two, negative pi over two, negative three pi over two, negative five pi over two, negative seven pi over two. Those don't change. The only thing that's going to change is how tall this thing is, what the amplitude is. All right, so let's get, let's start with zero. Let's get, not get too cocky here. Uh, what's the sine? Of, or the sorry, the cosine of zero. One. But then what do we do with that? We multiply by negative two. Negative. So one times negative two is negative two. Now let's come over here to pi. What's the cosine of pi? Negative one. Negative one. Times, times negative two. Times two. So just like with the negative that we put in front of the sine, it's flipped over this cosine wave, just like it flipped over the sine wave, and it's made it twice as amplitude. Twice as tall. And uh, that just comes down here. And uh, here, there, here, there. You know, you'll notice I, I'm not in, anymore, I'm not uh, finding the cosine, then multiplying it by negative two, and doing all that. I'm noticing, oh, there's this pattern, it's just making it twice as tall, and it's upside down. And so if you're going to use that pattern, you need to be careful that you do it correctly. So basically, can you just find all the points where the line comes from? Yeah. As we have gotten more familiar with sine and cosine, we know they take this shape. Okay. So it's just a matter of finding where are key points of this shape so that we can draw this curve. Okay. So some really nice ones are when we wind up getting zero as the cosine of the sine. We like to plot those. We like to plot kind of that middle line that cuts right, right through the, the horizontal. And then the, the biggest and the smallest, the maximum and minimum values, we like to plot those too. We can plot the middle parts and we can plot the top and the bottom. It helps us to draw that curve. So what's the amplitude of this cosine wave? Two. It's equals to the absolute value of this right here. So it's two, the amplitude is two from the middle to the top. What's the period of negative two cosine of? Two pi. Still two pi. Then, if we want to, this is like the last thing we want to be able to do. If we want to change the period of it, make it wider or, or, or narrower. Cosine of two x or Anything like Something times x. x, you think that'll change it? Yeah. Not like or x plus 2 or x minus 2, you or that you think that'll work too? That'll do yeah. the same thing? Anything that has to do with x. Anything that has to do with x. Okay, let's try an experiment. Let's try. Uh, your first suggestion was. Cats? <laughs> That's just x. Let's try y equals the sine of 2x. Let's see what that. Do you think that'll make the period twice as big? Or half as big? You can take twice as long to go to full cycle or half as long to go through a full cycle. Half as long. Half as long? Let's find out. Let's go to zero. What's the sign of zero? Well, I guess this is a little tricky because what we need to do is take the sign of two times zero. Well, okay, so first two times zero is zero. And then the sign of zero is so that, that hasn't changed. Let's move over to pi. Pi was a nice uh, place to, to be. Okay, the sine of 2 times 2 pi. Or sorry, pi. Not just not 2 pi, just pi. Okay. So that's the sine of 2 pi. What's the sine of 2 pi? 0. 0. Well, that seems to be. 
the same. Okay, let's keep looking. Let's go to 2 pi sine of 2 times 2 pi sine of 4 pi. What's the sine of 4 pi? Zero. Also zero. You can't multiply it by any. You cannot? Well, now let's look in between here. Okay? Because the sine wave would normally go up here and through there, like that, right? So let's see what, what happens. Let's go to pi over 2, which in the regular sine of x is 1, right? Pi over 2 goes to 1. But for pi over 2, sine of pi over 2, but not that, it's 2 times pi over 2. So sine of pi. Sine of pi. And then what's the sine of pi? Zero. Zero. So it doesn't go up and then down. It goes up and down, up and down, and then one pi. Goes up and down and back up within one pi. Let's just double check that. So that right here would be what? What angle is this? Pi. Pi over two. Pi over four. Pi over four. Uh, we'll do this right here. Sine of two times pi over. Sine of pi over 2. What's the sine of pi over 2? 1. So we put in pi over 4, that's what we're right here. But then we multiply it by 2 and we get the sine of pi over 2, which is 1. Okay. And if we come over to 3 pi over 4, that's the sine of 2 times 3 pi over 4. That's the sine of 3 pi over 2. What's the sine of 3 pi over 2? So negative 1. Negative 1. A little bit in the way. Negative 1. Okay. So reset it just a minute ago. It goes up and down and back up. It goes through one full cycle in 1 pi, where it would usually take 2 pi. What do you think it's going to do after that? Go up, go up, go down, go up again. It's going to go another full cycle by the time you get to 2 pi, another full cycle by the time you get to 3 pi, 4 pi. So, duplicate that. So, what's the period of uh, sine of 2x? 1 pi. Or pi. Which, compared to normal, is what? So the, the period is half as big as it used to be. Okay. That kind of makes sense because because one period is, is uh, you know how many radians do you have to go through before you see all the sine values come up? Well, if we multiply all the angles by two, every angle is twice as big, which means you get there in half the time, right? Like when you drive twice as fast, you get there in half. The What do you think for, we'll first make a guess. Ooh, oh, no. Uh, that was really hard. Go back two pages. Copy this again. What do you think for y equals the cosine of 1 fourth x? times as big a period. So how big a period is it? So four times eight. as big as what? Two, two pi. pi. So, eight so it'll pi. be. So, so eight, eight pi. Yeah, people might do that. Where? On the graph. Well, so one would be at four pi. Four pi. Four pi. One would be at four pi? Yeah. For cosine? Oh. Negative one. 
So, we get, so in 4 pi, we're going to get half of the cycle. And if we look back at our cosine, look at your cosines, starts up here at 1. And then it goes down like this and back up in a full period. So now we're starting to, to get these little tricks. Right? If we know the period, then we know how that wave starts. Cosine starts at 1. And then it's going to come down and go back up in one full period. Right? But one period, how big is this period? 8 pi. So like. The, the whole graph that we see from negative 4 pi to 4 pi, that's 8 pi, right? Yeah. So in 8 pi, the whole width of the graph, we need to show one period. Which means from here to here, we'll show half of the period. Right? Mm -hmm. So here's what a full period of cosine looks like. There's half of a period. So that's what we need to show in 4 pi. Okay? From 1 all the way down to negative 1. That's what half of a, a cycle would be. Right in the middle of that is 2 pi. That would be right there. So we're going to graph best we can. That's like a cosine wave. Over here, there's another half. Down to negative 1, goes through 0. Okay. And that right here, it's going to be at, uh, this is going to be negative pi over 4, so that's going to be positive root 2 over 2. period, one cycle in a distance of 8 pi. Uh, what's the amplitude of this wave? 1, 1, 1, yeah. Uh, okay, so to find the period, let's say we're looking at uh, y equals the cosine of some number b times x. What do we do with that, that number b to figure out the new period? Multiply by 2. Multiply by 2. No, b is one fourth in this case. Yeah. So we don't want to multiply one fourth by two. No, just do the reciprocal. Yeah, or or we could say, take two pi, the normal standard period of a sine wave or cosine wave, and multiply by the reciprocal of b, or otherwise known as dividing by b. If I divide by one fourth, I'll be multiplying by four. Four times two, eight. We get to understand this more, we can, we can actually write functions that, that represent uh, real life situations. Um, but for now, we need to learn about how to change the period and how to change the amplitude, and then we'll learn how to ch like shift it left and right, stuff like that. Uh, let's try and be real. Creative and, um, so. It won't be 100% accurate, but let's let's have it be like uh, represent the the temperatures throughout the year. So let's um, basically just change the period to 12 months, right? It takes 12 months to go through a full cycle of temperatures, right? So let's just do that. It's going to be a little bit off because it, it would also if we make the amplitude one, it would mean that the high is one. One. That's not the kind of variation we see in temperature. But let's just change the period to 12. And uh, it's, you know, that, I mean, I don't really have anything other to, anything other to say than that. That's what we're going to do. Um, so, how, let, let's use the, the sine wave. Okay. How do we change the period of the graph? So that something needs to change the period to 12. To 12. Okay, not 12 pi, but 12, the number 12. So how are we going to do that? Let's, let's take advantage of this equation that we just wrote. P equals 2 pi over B. Okay. So do we know B in this case? Do we know what B is? We know what we want 
the, the well, or we want to figure out the, we know what we want the result to be, right? We know what we want the period to be. So in this equation, we know what the period should be. What should the period be? 12. We want to make it 12 months. So that equals 2 pi over b. Multiply by b. Yeah, those cancel just like any other factors in yeah. you know, cross cancellation would, would cancel out. Multiply this by b. You get 12b equals 2 pi. Divide by 12. b equals 2 pi over 12 equals. Pi over 6. If somebody said 1 6 and that was close, yeah. just we need pi over 6. It's like we want to cancel out that radianness of it. And then we want to, uh, yeah. Um, make sure we do that at 2 pi over b. So if we want to change the period to 12, <coughs> y equals the sine of 2 pi, or say pi, over 6. Something's fishy here. Hold on. 12, 12, 12, 12. <coughs> Okay, five or six times x. Okay. Now this graph's not going to work anymore, right? This goes from zero to four pi. We want to have it be twelve. So we'll just uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just scratch some stuff out here. These guys. We'll change them to things that are the values that are a little more convenient for us. So should we have like one cycle between here and there? Or between here and there? Maybe we should show two cycles on the right side. Okay. So, so I mean this would have to be what? 24. Wait. <coughs> this would be 12. This would be 12. Yeah. This would be 6. This would be 18. Okay. 6 months, 12 months, 18 months, 24 months. Okay. We have to do more. We have to get a little more creative, but we just don't, we don't understand the sine waves well enough to, to shift it left and right and move it up and down and stuff like that quite yet. We'll, we'll, we'll stay away from that for the moment. Okay, so let's test it out. Will we see a sine wave go uh, up and down and, let's see, up, down, and up like that, and then again, we see two of those. Let's test it out. So let's go with zero, we'll put zero in there, pi over six times zero. Zero, sine of zero is zero. Okay, now let's try six. So if I get six, okay. Or is equal pi. What's that? Or is just equal pi. That will just equal pi. Six is will cancel. We'll just get pi. Sine of pi is? Or zero. Sine of pi is zero. Okay. Try 12. Zero. Zero. If I get 18, 18 divided by six is three. Three pi is sine of three pi is zero. And uh, 24 is going to be zero. Okay, let's go to three. And we should see it go up to one. Put it at three, three cancel there, we get pi over two, sine of pi over two. Uh, How about that, that's nine. Nine cancels with six, this is three, this is two, three pi over two, what's the sine of three pi over two? Negative one. 
Two full cycles, or two periods, you know, within that space right there. So, whether we know B and we want to figure out what the period is, or we know what the period needs to be and we need to figure out what B is going to be, uh, we can use that equation to do all that. Um, Now that we've gone through a, a lot of sine and cosine, let's look at the tangent. Okay, so let's go through the tangents. And, and rather than, uh, well, if we look on our, on our unit circles and we say go to pi over 4, how would we find the, the tangent of pi over 4? Sine of a cosine, right? Let's save a little bit of time. Let's, let's not take the sine divided by the cosines. Although, what is the sine divided by cosine at pi over 4? 1. 1. It's pi over root 2 over 2 divided by root 2 over 2. So, uh, something divided by itself is 1. So, that's not a bad thing to know. Uh, although, that's pi over 2. This is pi over 4 we were just talking about. Okay. Well, let, let's. Uh, Let's go to pi over 2. No. Let's see, let's stay away from pi over 2 for a second. How about negative pi over 4? Negative pi over 4. So we go negative 1. Negative 1. We got the same situation except for one of them is negative, so we're going to get a negative 1. Oh, you're right. Um, let's do pi over 3. That's a little bit bigger than pi over 4. And let's just use our calculators. Let's make our calculators in radian mode. And I take the tangent of pi over 3. Let's get a decimal approximation and, and graph that for me. And we do, what's that? 1.73. Okay, so pi over um, pi over pi over three. Pi over three. It's right about there. And you said 1.7? Yes. 1.7 what? Three. Three? Okay, so that'd be right about there. Okay. Oh, this is not new. We've talked about how the tangent can get bigger and bigger and bigger because we're taking sine over cosine into the uh, pretty large value. How about zero? What's the tangent of zero? We can actually figure that out just looking at our unit circle. Sine over cosine. Zero. Zero would be zero over one. All right. Well, then I would think that at negative pi over three, we're going to get negative 1.73. That would make sense. OK, so here's a question. What about at pi over two? What is the tangent of pi over two? How did you get that? Now, what's one over zero? Undefined. You can't take one over zero. You can't divide by zero, right? Well, what about when we? Let's just get closer. What's something between pi over three and pi over two? Between pi over three and pi over two. Maybe like a pi over. Twelve, like eleven, five pi over twelve. Yeah. Five pi over twelve. Yeah. Just a little bit between pi over three and pi over two. So let's check it out. What's pi over twelve? Tangent of pi over twelve. Or oh, sorry, what is it? Five, 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 five pi over twelve. Mm -hmm. We don't even have. 
add room to that. 3.7? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm hello. Let's squash this down. So that I can fit, sorry, it's 3.1 again? 3.7. 3.7, here's 3, 4, 3 3.5, 3 3.7, add pi over, th add 5 pi over 12, like that. Okay, and actually down here at negative 11, or negative 5 pi over 12, you get negative that, 3.7. Okay, um, what about, Four, uh, what about 13 pi over 24? Come on. Wait, 13? 17? No. 7? 11 pi over 12. 11 pi over 12. 7.59. Well, what do, I, what do I have to do now so I can fit it? I'm going to have to squash it down again, right? What do you think, as we get closer to pi over 2, what kind of tangent values are we going to get? Bigger. Bigger, 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 bigger. On into infinity, it'll never stop getting bigger. Okay. But once we get to pi over 2, what happens when we take the tangent of pi over 2? It gets too big at Well, it's undefined. It, yeah, it's, I don't know, maybe it is something like it's too big. Okay, so we put this little guy right here. This is called a vertical asymptote. It's like a barrier. It says, this is very bad. Pi over 2 is a very bad place to be if you're trying to take a tangent. You get something that's undefined. Okay? Stay away. It's like a roadblock. The police are there. They've got flashing lights and yellow tape. But don't go there. Okay? But what about when you just cross right over pi over 2 and we go to 2 pi over 3? What's the tangent of 2 pi over 3? 2 pi over 3 is about right. Is that familiar? 1.73? Negative 1.73. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 1.73, negative 1.73, right there. And what about the tangent of pi? Zero. And if we go to four pi over three? What about negative pi over 2? Another barrier, another, barrier, another uh, vertical asymptote, another uh, police barricade. Do not come here. If you try to take a tangent of pi over 2, you're going to get undefined. It just doesn't work. So if I were to plot all these points, they would start to look like this. And in this direction, they start to look like this. And then when I cross over this vertical asymptote, it starts all over again, and I would have another barrier right here. So the closer I get to pi over 2, the bigger the tangent is. Get any closer to pi over 2, bigger tangent. It just keeps going off towards infinity. That's what's happening right here. Okay. But once I cross just to the other side of pi over 2, I start getting these really, really negative really far into the negative. And then it follows that pattern all over again. As you get closer and closer and closer to 3 pi over 2, I get those big, 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 big tangents. And then I need to cross over, and I start over again, and I start over again, and I start over again. That's weird. Oh, it is weird. They're, well, just like the sine and the cosine do. Right? Yeah, but it doesn't, it's not connected. It's not connected. It's not what we call a continuous function. Yeah. It breaks up. So, but here's a question. What's the period of the tangent? It does repeat, right? It is periodic. It, follows the, it gets the same y values over and over and over. What? Pi? Pi, yeah. Pi. It takes pi. So, like from negative pi over 2, or just just past that, just to the, to the positive, closer to the positive of that, we have these really big negative tangents. Okay, negative pi over 2. And then when we come to pi over 2, we are undefined again. So the period, the amount of space that it takes to repeat itself is pi over 2, uh, or sorry, pi. And another pi, and another pi, you'll just see the same pattern repeating every pi. So the period, the period, period, period is pi. So what would be?
be your guess about this one. Y equals the tangent of 2x. What do you say the period of that one is? It's the same kind of a deal, like if you multiply all your angles by two, then the angles are twice as big, and you go through a cycle faster, you get pi over two. And what about y equals the tangent of uh, one eighth x? Eight times five. It equals pi over one eighth equals So in general, for the tangent, y is, or sorry, p, the period, is equal to not 2 pi, but pi over b. So you got a b out in front of the x. Same thing, except for the, the beginning period is pi instead of 2 pi. Um, Write up the homework there uh, after I ask this last question. What's the amplitude of the tangent? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and when we say things are infinity like that, that's kind of useless information, right? Yeah. The amplitude is infinity. Okay, no thank you. Don't tell me the amplitude. <laughs> so it doesn't really have an amplitude. Point one, four point one.